I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. Today, the experiment that I am doing is on my favorite camera, my beloved, the Runcam Eagle. This is actually the Runcam... Watch the props there, buddy. This is actually the Runcam Eagle Pro V2. This is the, the latest Eagle, I think. Um, and it's got some differences from the Eagle that I normally use. Uh, you see, it's got a native resolution 16.9 uh, sensor, native aspect ratio, 16.9. What that means is that if you set the camera to 16.9 widescreen, then you get a nice wide 170 degree field of view. But if you set the camera to 4.3 standard and regular screen, then you get only 140 degree field of view. So here's what I've done. I've taken the stock 2.5 millimeter lens off of it and I have put on a 1.8 millimeter lens and it's really wide angle. I'm gonna show you, let's go to the bench and I'll show you what that's like. So here's the stock lens and the camera is in 16.9 widescreen picture mode, 170 degree field of view. Now we're gonna switch it to 4.3 and we get the narrower 140 degree field of view. But let me show you something Watch this. I'm going to bring back in the 16.9 image and you can see the camera is just slicing off the outer edges of the picture. Watch. Here's the 16.9 image and I'm just going to stretch it back out. Yeah. When you go from 16.9 to 4.3, it literally just slices the edges of the image off. And that's why you get the reduced field of view. And here is what the 1.8 millimeter lens looks like. This is 4.3 mode. Let's go look at 16.9 and see the widescreen. <laughs> okay, so if you're going to use this lens, widescreen is not for you. <laughs> but what about the 4.3? Well, let's go back to the field. We'll see. So when I saw that, my first thought was, well, this is clearly not going to work. And my second thought was, well, why don't we do a fly it? And let's just find out. So that's what we're going to do. First thing I notice is that the colors are off, um, especially on the leaves of the trees. And I think that's because this doesn't have a UV filter on the lens. And so the, the camera, a camera can either have a UV filter on the lens or on the sensor. And this one must have had the UV filter on the old lens. And now that this new lens must not have one. And so we're seeing a whole bunch of UV light that we don't normally see. Some people do it for artistic effect. It does look kind of cool. All the leaves look white because of the UV. Um, the field of view is crazy. It's insane. Um, also, this quad has race rates. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> this quad has race rates. Wow. Okay, so that's going to take a little getting used to. Yeah, I was playing around with like 300 degrees per second. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. I can't fucking fly this. Oh my god. This is insane. Uh, wow. Wow. It's, um, like it's flyable. The rates are actually taking more getting used to than anything. Could you, like, shoot gaps with it? I mean, that's the problem with... Uh, wide field of view is difficulty shooting gaps, right? Because you, um, the gaps look smaller in the screen. Oh my god. Yeah. And obstacles coming out of nowhere. Oh. There you go. I forgot I had turtle mode. Yeah, so... Can I take off from here? Yes, I can. So, yeah, so like this branch sort of came out of nowhere. Yeah, see, obstacles, even obstacles like that I know are there, are coming out of nowhere. 
I would get, it's hard to judge proximity. I would get used to judging proximity. See, like I can't really tell how far I am from the fence. It looks like I'm really close, but I'm not sure if I am or not. But I would get used to that. And in fact, you could probably fly closer to things because you have more peripheral vision. So you can know how close you are to the object. Whereas with a narrower field of view camera, you would just be guessing. Uh, but, like objects, obstacles just sort of come out of nowhere. See that tree, that scraggle tree there? There it is. Um, it's really just invisible. Um, yeah. 14.3 volts. On the other hand, cornering should be easier because you could be tighter into the corner and just barely miss the obstacle. Oh my god, battery sag, 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 sag. I was getting real low to the ground and I it wasn't because, yeah, sag. Telemetry recovered. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Horace. Telemetry recovered. Ninety-one dB. dB relative to what? dB is always relative to something. Eighty dB of what? It always feels like I'm gonna go ass backwards into this tree. So as I come around here, watch. As I come around here, it feels like I'm sliding into that tree because the tree takes up so much of my peripheral vision. But actually, I'm not. It feels like I'm swinging wide. But I'm not, because it's just that I can see way more in my peripheral vision. That's fascinating. This Careeria flies great. It flies really great. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh! Wow. Wow. This is hurting me a little bit. Oh my gosh. See, I almost hit those branches. I'm not convinced this is good, and I really am not convinced I should be standing here. It's hard to line up the turns because you can't see the apex as early as you normally would. Gosh, this Korea turn. It, it turns so good, though. Wow, the, the Talon corners. So effing good. See? Oh my god. <sighs> okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. This is stupid. It also looks like I'm about to just freaking head on the thing. Oh my god. <sighs> looks like I'm about to freaking head on the thing. Wow. Okay. The Kareria Talon on a windless day corners better than any quad in existence. I mean, that's, I, that, wow. And number two, this lens is terrifying. But I think you could get used to it. But I'm not sure you should. Happy flying.